Hi everyone, I am so excited because I am speaking with author Fred Waitskin and we are talking about his brand new book, comes out on the 28th and I'm trying to see if you can see the cover, I'm getting a little bit of a glare, but it's called Deep Water Blues and it's beautiful and uh, Fred, in, in prep for talking to you today, I just had to go back and watch Searching Bobby Fisher yesterday. I had to. I've seen that movie so many times, but then it's been a while. So I went back and watched it. And you know what? I suggest if you, if whoever's listening to us, if you have not seen the movie or read the book, I did both. I read the book and saw the movie. Do it today because I don't know why you wouldn't. I made all my children watch it. I <laughs> because, but you know what? Watching it as a 54 year old as opposed to 93 when my kids were younger, like yeah. your son was yeah. younger, it's I had a whole different effect of it. I cried, I cried at some of those scenes because I need to go apologize to my children for some stuff, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of people ask about that book, of course. And, and it was extremely popular, and the movie was a huge success. But, it, it, you know, people, people say to me, how could a movie about chess be so inviting? But it really wasn't about chess. It was no. about No. No. You know, it was about, you know, what, what a parent has to deal with with kids. And, and, you know, parents that don't have chess prodigies relate to it just as powerfully as, you know, as I did. Oh, so my gosh. You know, Fred, when I was, I was like, you were so vulnerable about it. I don't know if people can understand that when you put your life out there in a book, okay, and I can talk about so many aspects of my life, but when you put, when I put myself out there as a mom and like what I did and I was realizing when I watched it yesterday, I was like, you were showing yourself at a very vulnerable, like with you and your son, like the struggles you were having. And we don't know as parents, you know, when you were saying, I don't know, I, I have been through that. I don't know. Like, <laughs> I don't know what to do, you know? Well, let me, let me tell you a secret, just between the two of us. Okay. Um, the way I do it is that when I write um, a memoir, I've written, you know, a couple of memoirs now, and, and my novels are also kind of borderline memoirs in a way. And the way I do it is that when I write about the character of Fred, I write about him as if he's a fictional character. Oh. And, and I, I create a certain amount of distance for myself when I write the book. And then when the book comes out, I have a horror moment. I say, oh my God, I said that. I actually put that out there in the world and I have to trouble over it for a while. But when I write about it, it's not an issue because it's just another guy that I'm writing about. Uh -huh. um, that's the trick. Yeah, I like I said, I wish when I was back in 93, I wish I would have paid attention to the parenting thing a little bit more because I, I, I'm all day yesterday, I'm like, all right, I'm going to write letters to my children. I am so sorry. I pushed you. I'm so sorry. I did, you know, X, Y, and Z, but we could do that forever, right? We could always be apologizing for what we didn't know, you know? You know, the great thing is that when, you're, when your kids grow up, they become 20s and 30s, and they, and they tell you what you did when, you know, when they were 11 or 12, you don't, you don't even remember it. I and don't. You, and you wonder if, they, if they're making it up. I, I do think they make it up. My oldest I, son so is I 32. Was, yeah, and I, they I believe they make it up. Hilarious. Yeah, I had a daughter, my youngest daughter was a gymnast and she got to a very elite level, right? Where I right. was like watching her diet and stuff. Right. And she'll like accuse me like, you know, you didn't feed me. And I'm like, you wanted to be in gymnastics? <laughs> I couldn't feed you. <laughs> I think we all experience this to greater or lesser extent. Yes, and that's why it hit. Yesterday was, I have to tell you, I got, even after seeing it so many times, you know, so everybody go watch it again because you need to watch it again because <laughs> there's so much more to it than about chess, so much more. Relationships, everybody's relationship. And the mom, I was like, I felt for the mom too. I was like, yes, take the boy. <laughs> take it. Joan Allen, Joan Allen, Joan Allen was a great person. You know, we got to know her really well. And, uh, and she, you know, actors are very different. Joan Allen wanted to know everything about Barney. She, she hung out with Barney. She wanted to learn how Barney speaks and how she thinks and how she feels. Now, Joe Montaigne, who played Fred, didn't want to know any of those things. He wanted really? to just sort of like go it his own way. Actors do it in different ways. Yeah. Yeah, it was, and then to see Lawrence Fishburne, like, you know, like it's, you know, it's been a minute. It's so, you know, the, the movie takes you back to 93 and you're like, wow, look at them. So, so, what about the, so what about the juxtaposition between that movie and that book and this new one? Very different, right? 
very different and but very different but I got so emotional about the book too you know you have a way and I, you know I've read a couple of your books and that's what I was saying like you are so vulnerable in your books and I do see how even though the part of it I can tell is by you know is is a memoir and then part of it isn't like I can almost feel it in you and when you talk about different people and you even when your relationships with other people other than you know what we've seen with your family it's so endearing it's so like it brought tears to my eyes I mean these people were so meant so much to you like I could almost feel it through the book so you tell me like did how was it writing like do you did you feel very emotional about them about the characters in the new book? Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I think that, um, you know, one of the, one, I don't think you can be a really good writer if you don't love people. If you don't love, love people and love the stories that they have to tell. I mean, because like, you know, I was, I was, I was reading this, um, I was reading this, uh, piece about Thomas Harris, the guy that wrote about Hannibal Lecter mm -hmm. yesterday. And he made the point that, um, he said, I don't think I've ever met, made up anything that I've ever written, which I found interesting because, you know, he's written about all these horror, horror characters, you know? Yeah. He would have said the same thing if, you, if you'd asked a question to me. I think that, like, you, you only, you know, you take what your material is is what you've experienced in your life, in the world. You know, whether it's Ernest Hemingway or Thomas Harris or Fred Wasey. You know, you just, you just know what you felt and what's true. Because if you try to make up stuff that's false – you know that if you, if 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 I would if I were to create a person, and I and I and I used emotions that I didn't feel in my own soul, everyone would know it was fake, and no one would like it. Mm. So yeah, I mean, I, I do feel for the characters in that book. Now, what, one of the things about that book that's so strange is that um, four or five of the characters are real people. I mean, Fred's a real person. You know, there are four or five other characters in the book that are real people. But there are also four or five characters in the book that are totally fictitious, at least in the sense that I think of, of fiction. Right. You know, they weren't people that I knew. They were people that I kind of created. And the way I create characters is I take a little bit of you, and I take a little bit of her, and I take a little bit of the next person, and then the character kind of comes together. But that's one of the unusual things about this book. You know, in my writing history... You know, just to give you like a short summary of how I got from the beginning to here. I started out writing short stories when I was a young man. Um, and I didn't know what fiction was. And I tried to create them, you know, like pulling birds out of trees. And I wasn't very successful doing it. And then I had um, a period of 15 years where I was writing for national magazines. I wrote a lot for the New York Times magazine, yeah. Sydney magazine, but other, many, many other, other big magazines. And it was a fantastic training ground for a novelist because I learned the importance of story. Mm. I realized you find a great story and then you can write a book. And then off, off that, that you know, graduate school of working for magazine journalism, I was able to become a novelist because I realized if I've got a great story, I'm, I'm three quarters there. There's no such thing as making it up. You, you know, you could tell me a great story, and it might be the the, the, the kernel of a novel or another friend of mine. Um, so I'm I'm kind of a scavenger. I look out for stories, but I think that all really great. I'm not to say that I'm a great writer, but I think all really top writers mm -hmm. look for stories, and when they find a story, they're halfway there. Yeah, and that's what I was thinking. I was like, okay, so he found this story, and I actually looked up where Rumke because I didn't even know where it was. It's a tiny, tiny island. <laughs> Tiny. Tiny. And um, I've only been, uh, my mom lived in Florida. I was to the Keys, but I've never been to any of the islands. So I wanted to get a feel for it. So I started reading about these islands. And from reading your book, I wanted to get that feeling of being there. And I, you know, <laughs> some of your adventures there, like I was like, oh my gosh, like just being out in the water like that and not, you know, I don't know. Like to me, I was like, what would I be worrying about? Weather? Like sharks, sharks make a big, huge thing. <laughs> well, you know the thing about that trip is, I mean, you know, I, I, I took three guys with me on this trip to go to Rum Key to finish the research that I needed to do to write the novel, mm. and none of the guys were experienced on the ocean, so that made it very tense. 
400 <laughs> mile trip down there. The only person that knew what he was doing out in the boat was me, you know, and, and, and you really need a strong crew. I, and in other ways, I had a very strong crew. They were great guys, soulful guys. And one of the guys was this artist. His name is John Mitchell. And he came along because we had this idea that he would do illustrations mm-hmm. of the characters that we met along the way, which is a very interesting idea. I don't know if you're aware of this, but like in the 19th century, when Charles Dickens was writing his books, um, it was very common to have illustra- illustrated novels. But then it, it kind of passed out of fas- yeah. fashion in the 20th century. We decided to bring it back. So they're beautiful, they're beautiful oh, they drawings are. in the book. I'm going to see if I can show one of them. They're, I love these pictures. Yeah, yeah, that, that's James Roll. He's a, he's a buddy of mine. He lives on Bimini, and he's an important character in the book. Yeah. There's so, every couple of, yeah, like, here's another one. Just look at that. That's a great yeah. picture. Yeah, it's not a beautiful, that's a beautiful picture. Oh, that's beautiful. I love that picture. All right, yeah. and, and, and I won't tell you what happens to that woman. She, that, that woman is a very key, key, key character in the book. Yes, absolutely. Hey, slow, I'll tell you that much. Yes, right. <laughs> yeah, we don't talk about the endings or anything. We don't do any giveaways. Now, oh. I would, my mom had a boat, but they never went farther than you could see land. Yeah. And so you you have gone <laughs> like that to me is scary because I'm like you know she would go off the coast of Florida but we could always see like there's Florida right it's like <laughs> there it is well, right you, know, you make a great point when you're a seaman and you go out beyond the, the side of land it's a very kind of spiritual and daunting moment and, and if you go out you know if you go beyond the side of land with a crew that doesn't know what they're doing <laughs> even scarier <laughs> it's, it's, it's even scarier the other the other point I wanted to make to you because you met, made the point that it's a, a tiny island it is it, it, this is a really cool thing I think um, Rum K is very small it's physically beautiful or at least it was before the tragedy started happening down there which I'm not going to say what they are yeah. but when you write about a little civilization that's only like 12 miles long and 4 miles wide it has a metaphorical resonance so that if you write about you know a love affair or a murder or a treason that takes place on a little island, it, it feels bigger than life. Whereas if you're writing about it in New York, it's just another event that happens right. among 20,000. Yes, absolutely. What, what do you love about being down there? I mean, is I, I looked at the pictures. I mean, the place looks absolutely beautiful, but it's not very inhabited. Like it's not, it, there's not like big cities. <laughs> you know, it's very well, quiet. You know, you know, before the tragedies took place, and we're not going to say what, what they are. Right. It was, it was a place where, you know, um, very wealthy sportsmen went. I mean, like, people, it was a beautiful vacation spot. Um, Jack Unassis used to go there for vacations. Yeah. Many, many actors and actresses and, and big time business people went down there because it's physically gorgeous. I mean, the, it's virgin waters. You know, you can catch any fish. It, the fishing is as good there as any place in the world virtually. It's beautiful, physically beautiful. But then, you know, when when the terrible tragedies happened on the island, everything turned. Mm-hmm. And the, the whole quality of the place um, became dangerous and then very sad. Mm, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you don't want to see anything like that happen, to, you know. But... The wa- I mean, the water looks unbelievable. It makes me want to go to the Caribbean because I have never been to the Caribbean. And right. I'm like, I've been as far as Key West. Like, I need to go further south than that, you know? But after reading this, I'm like, oh, I really do need to visit the Caribbean. I really should go down there and see what it's like. But I love when I was watching um, the movie, the fishing that you stuck in the movie was you took your son fishing before a big competition, and I was like, oh, there it is, like you were fishing, like you took your son fishing. Was that something that you guys did? Like, was that a huge part of your life with him? It was a huge part of my life before him. You before know? him, right? <laughs> you know, when I, was, when I was, let me think, when I was 13 years old, my mother took a copy of, 1952 copy of Life magazine and put it in front of me, with Ernest Hemingway's Old Man in the Sea. Oh. And I read that book, and... I decided at 13 that there was kind of like this fundamental link between big game fishing and literature because I was so intoxicated by Hemingway's writing and the prose rhythms in that book. And so for me, those ideas have always sort of been linked. But yes, you asked about my son, Josh. Yeah, I mean, we we fished together from when he was six years old. And and relative to the chess part of his life, 
it was very valuable because like it was a way to get away from the tension of that of that of that world and to have a you know a relaxing beautiful um interlude with your your because bonnie my wife is a great fisherman as well and then we go back to it again so yeah we were we've always been a fishing family oh that's awesome because i really haven't like when my mom moved i'm from pennsylvania it's just not big around here you know where I'm from. You'd, you'd have to go. But when she moved to Florida, she did. She married somebody then that was a fisherman, and so I got to see a little bit of it. But it really isn't a part of my world. But okay, before I let you go, that shark story, when you were crawl, was that a true story? When you were crawling into the boat and the shark got your one flipper. <laughs> That was a true story. And it horrified me. It, oh my been swimming in the Bahamas for like a gazillion years. And that shark came right at me and grabbed my flipper and almost took my foot off. Yes, it's a true story. Wow. But you're right also that sharks play a big part in, in, in this novel. Yeah. I mean, it, is are sharks more prevalent down there than... I mean, Florida has their share. Right. of sharks but is it more so when you get or is it because of deep water or is it when you more get into the deep water you know shark, sharks often trail um game fish so like if there are a lot of mm. tuna in the area sharks are there because they like to feed on the tuna um and in the run carry key area where i write the novel about there's a lot of tuna so it's loaded with sharks uh, they like tuna and some of them are very bad on <laughs> But when I was reading it, I knew that some of the stories were true. I was like, I wonder if that happened to Fred. I wonder if he got that close to a shark, you know? That's, that's <laughs> well, this story is amazing. And, you know, but also before I let you go, are you writing something right now? I mean, this book is going to be coming out this within the week. And, you know, so you get to do all the promos and have all the fun of that with this book. But do you also write while you're doing that? Or do you just kind of set it aside? Well, you know, at the moment, I'm doing a lot of writing relative to this book because, um, you know, a, a, lot of, a lot of magazines and blogs are asking me to write stuff on creative process. So I'm thinking about, you know, how one writes, why one writes, and I'm writing a lot about that, about that which I enjoy doing. Yeah. And I've got some ideas for something else, but I, it's, it's kind of like in a nascent form. I'm just kind of beginning to brood about it. Yeah. Well, let me show the cover off because this cover is beautiful. I love it. It's a lovely cover. It really is. And look at guys, it's not that long. I read it in a day. I read books in a day, but you still can read it in a day. I mean, yeah. you sit down and read it. And um, what a great story. I, I love your storytelling. I really do. And I feel so blessed to have been able to talk to you. It made my day. <laughs> so. It's been a great, great conversation. I've enjoyed it. Oh, thank, thank you. So everybody, I am going to be putting uh, the link, this book you can pre-order on Amazon. I'm going to see if there's the indie bound link up yet to so that you can go to your local bookstore and get it because, you know, that's pretty important too. And um, I will also put your links up and so people can find you everywhere. And thank you so much for talking with me. Thank you, Michelle. I enjoyed it greatly. Okay. Have a great day. Bye. Bye-bye.